Hi, it's Corrine for the Wild Orchid Crafts Design Team, and today I have a mini album to share with you today. I do have a full start to finish video on this that I will play in just a moment. It is not a mini album tutorial. I don't spend a lot of time showing you exactly how I did it. If you're looking for a mini album tutorial, I have a more detailed one that I did quite a while ago. I will put that down in the description box below, and that shows you very specifically how I do it. This I do the entire album on film. However, it is in fast play because it did take me a little while to work on this album. So it would have been way too long of a video. So just before we start, I'd like to show you that I use the Teresa Collins memorabilia. This is a beautiful paper collection and this is the six by six. I pretty much used it all. And my album is four and a quarter by five and a half. The spine on it is approximately two. And on the front here, I use some Spellbinders dies. I printed that out, Life is Good. I use this beautiful white magnolia flower, two of the little daisy flowers, and my favorites, these little sweetheart blossoms from Wild Orchid Crafts. And then I use these pearl sprays, loop sprays, that's the first time I've, I've had these and I love them. I'm, I'm already planning on ordering more of those. So just the paper on the front and back. And every page is an envelope. So I cut this out from my Cameo. It's a coin envelope, so photos can be placed in here or anything, journaling, receipts, memorabilia. A little photo on here could be placed if the person wanted to as well. But I just wanted to share with you, for the binding I used the Laura Dennison Stack the Deck. And this is a, um, this is one that I have here, her hinge system. If you do not have these envelopes, you could do everything. I do go through the sizes in, in the um, video today. If you do not have the envelopes, you can simply take two pieces of paper to whatever size you're doing and sandwich them between these hinges here. So again, you could just add your tape, back them, leave yourself a pocket if you wanted to or completely adhere them down. So even if you don't have a Cameo or you don't have these um, coin envelopes, you can do the same thing just with paper. So on the front here, I made a little side pocket. I used some glitter tape and Wild Orchid Craft flat back pearls. I will have a link to all the Wild Orchid Craft products that I use down in the description box, along with a link to Wild Orchid Crafts. Inside the pocket, this is from the paper collection. This is not, this is, um, I believe, Simple Stories, but I thought it went well. And I used the Oyster Baker's Twine from Wild Orchid Crafts. So those just tuck in here. Photos can be placed in here as well. And on every pocket I did a heart from the paper collection. So on this side I did a little more of the Baker's Twine. I used two different hearts. One is from the DCWV Glitter Glitzy cardstock. And to the pocket I have a photo mat. I stapled on a little piece from the cutouts. These are also from the cutouts. And again, this is, I believe, Simple Stories, but I thought it went well in here. On this side, I have a side pocket. I used a Heidi Swap tag, and I sprayed it with her Color Shine in teal, since it has the blue throughout. And then I have two more tags in here. I used some of the pleated ribbon. On, on top of that, I added some of that glitter tape, and then some of this flower trim. It's very dainty, very pretty, I love that. On this side I used the new um, trim organza with an organza flower, I absolutely love it. And I made it into a pocket, added one of the little tags from the paper collection. This side I used a Spellbinders Border One die. I made a pocket, added some of the paper collection, a bow, from the um, same DCWV paper, and then a few tags. This I cut out with the Marianne Creatables die. So even though this is a little album, a lot of photos can be held in this because of all the pockets and envelopes, of course. This side I left blank, but um, I added one of the tags from the collection and I left it open so a photo can be placed behind it. 
And on the last page, this is a Marianne uh, Creatables die that I got from Cut at Home, and I placed a little uh, journaling card in the inside, and another one of those bows, and two tags behind it from the paper collection. I love this paper. And to the center of the bow, I used a little flat back with the diamond center. I got, I think, a hundred comes in them, and they're maybe a dollar or two. So their prices are very reasonable. On this last, on the last cover, I added a cutout frame that I left open at the top so the person can slip a photo behind it, and some of the foundation blooms with a flat back pearl in the center along with the flat back pearls. So if you'd like to stay tuned for the start to finish on this, please do. And check out Wild Orchid Crafts for all their amazing products. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying for the start to finish on it. These are the envelopes that I cut from the Cameo. And like I said previously, if you don't have a Cameo or a Cricut or some of these coin envelopes, you can do this simply with paper, just using the measurements that I will be giving out here in a little bit. So I'm just showing you how I glued them together and I did make six of them. And I'm going through all the measurements quickly here. You can pause on them if you want. But I'm using 8.5 by 6.5 black cardstock, and I'll overlap them by half inch. My chipboard is 5.5 by 4 and an eighth, and my spine is 1 and 13 16 by the 5.5. Here's my hinge. I'm only adding tape to one side, and I cut them all to 5 by 7 16 by 2.5, 2, and, a half, two and, one and a half. Here are the papers that will go on the back of my alb or my envelope, and they're three and five sixteenths by five and three eighths. And here's the silhouette size if you want. It's eight point two five three is the width. The height is seven point seven six nine, and there's the design number as well. So now, like I said, I'm going to overlap them by half of an inch. That'll give me paper that's long enough to add my covers to. Here's a piece of Tyvek 5.5 by 3 and 3 fourths. I added tape to the entire back of that. You don't have to do this, but it does help with the strength of your album. And again, I place down my spine. And now I'm removing the tape backing. I realized I need another piece of tape on there because I like to use a lot of tape. I don't want these albums coming apart. And now I add wet glue to the center and use a little template that I made so I leave myself enough room between the cover and the spine. You want to leave at least an eighth inch. That way it folds nicely. Your book opens and closes nicely. So here I'm measuring out a half inch and going to be cutting that off because you don't need all that extra bulk. It just takes extra tape and bulk. So I'm going to cut that off with my scissors, add my tape to the entire perimeter, and I will also be adding tape to the spine and the covers, which you'll see here. You want to make sure that when you glue your paper down, it's adhered very well, otherwise it will bubble up. I've done that before in the past where I didn't add tape there and it did bubble up when you open and close it. So now you want to miter the corners by taking a little bit off, but you don't want to cut it all the way to the chipboard, again leaving about a 1 8 inch. That way when you fold it, it folds nicely. So I'm going to remove all the tape and press it down and also use my bone folder to really press it down. I like to do the long sides first, then I'm going to tuck in the corners, again just giving it a nicer fold once it's done. So I'm doing that to all four corners and then I will adhere down that each side piece, really pressing it down with my bone folder. And you want to use a good adhesive to do, so, to do this. So now to cover the inside, a 12 by 12 piece will fit, so I actually cut it to 10 and a quarter by 5 and 3 eighths. And again, I'm adding more tape because that's where my binding is going to be, where my little booklet's going. So I want to add a lot of tape, making sure my entire spine is covered. And then just simply centering that, placing it down. And then I will very carefully fold it up and use my bone folder to press in the creases of that. But I'm being very careful when I do that. You can rip your paper if you're not. So now my cover is made. I want to start with the inside. I'm going to um, add my hinge to the book itself. I like to do that first to make sure I get it on very straight because then all your pages will be straight. 
So I'm deciding which I like uh, for the front of my cover, and now I'm adding in my hinge system. Once I'm happy, I'm pressing that down back and forth, working those, those hinges, that way it opens and closes nicely. And now I will simply add my envelope to one side, the side I want to show as you're going through the book, and then I will go back and cover that back piece with the other black paper that I cut out. You don't have to do that, that's optional to add that black piece. You can put decorative paper right away, but at this point I wasn't sure what paper I was using, so I just like to finish the book and then make my decisions from there. So here are the black pieces that I cut out. Some of them, like here, I decided I wanted to make a pocket instead of doing a full um, page. So I just eyeballed it, cut it out, and now I'm deciding I want to use a border uh, decorative border, so I'm using Spellbinders Borders 1, and I'm going to add that scallop border to the top, or not scallop, um, decorative border. I guess it's more of a bracket border. So I'm just lining that up. Being that I already had tape on it, I'm just going to leave that tape there, that way uh, tags and photos can slide in and out of the pocket. And now I'm adding another page. I like to take the um, top of the tape off first, line it up, get it exactly where I want, press it down, and then remove the rest of the tape. And that way it goes on straight. So here I'm deciding I want another side pocket. So again, just eyeballing it, I cut it probably two-thirds of it, or one-third off, leaving two-thirds of it, adhering that down. And I think this is my last page I'm adhering down the back. You could leave yourself an extra pocket on these as well if you wanted to. So now my book is done. Here's where I decided I'm going to use the Teresa Collins memorabilia and just take it one page at a time, going through, adding my adhesive and my tape. Um, this actually is the front and back covers, the inside covers. I just measured out the covers and left myself a 1 8 inch border. This is a scrap that I was able to use for that side pocket and I decided I wanted to add pattern paper behind the pocket so I just lightly peeled back the corners. I will glue it down and then I will glue them down a little bit better with some wet glue. That way I make sure that the pocket does not come up. I'm just using um, Scotch Quick Dry. Again, doing the same thing with that pocket, I decided I wanted paper behind it, so I just lightly peeled it up and glued it back down. Here I decided to um, also make another small pocket. This is just on a page that I added the black paper to along the full back. I had changed my mind and wanted to make a small pocket simply because I loved the front side and the back side of this paper and I wanted to use both. So instead of adhering one piece down, I cut off a small piece and then cut off a black border to give it a pocket. That way I could use the front side and the back side of this piece of paper that I had. I think it was the last piece of paper I had of that. So I'm adding my glue to three sides and gluing that down. I used some of the Oyster Baker's Twine from Wild Orchid Crafts to wrap around it before I adhered it down. And now I'm going to adhere my spine piece and my front and back cover. I always, when I'm picking out pattern papers, I decide that first. I decide what I want to use for front and back cover and set it aside so I don't accidentally use it inside the book. and I adhere wet glue into the inside because if you're doing something heavy on the cover, it can pull that paper up a little. So to avoid that, I add wet glue to the center of it as well. So now I just cut out some hearts from the Cameo from the same paper collection and adding one to each of the envelopes. I thought about adding um, pattern paper to the envelopes, but I really liked leaving them how they were. 
So now just to decorate the inside, I added a side pocket to that front cover, and now I'm adding some glitter tape. And I'm pulling out some Heidi Swap tags, the Color Shine tags, and I decided I wanted to add one in there because I have her color spray in teal, and I thought that would go well inside this book. I'm doing that off camera. I'm spraying it, and then I will um, dry it. And once it's completely dry, I go back to it probably 15-20 minutes later, and I take some uh, glass cleaner to it, some Windex, and it really it it cleans out the parts that are not supposed to have color shine on them. Now I'm making a bow using a Marianne Creatable die. I end up not using this bow, but I love this bow, so I was hoping to work it somewhere in the book, but it was just a little too big. Here's an extra heart that I had cut out, and then I cut another one from the DCWV Glitzy Glitter and added that. And now I'm going back and using some Fabri-Tac and adding some of the flat back pearls. These are some of my favorites to use. And it adhered down pretty well. I love that Fabri-Tac. This tag is from, I believe, The Simple Stories, but I thought it went well in this album, so I'm adding a little Baker's Twine to it. And for the front of my album, I'm using some Spellbinder Scalloped Oval dies. I cut one in lightweight chipboard and two out of some black cardstock, so to give it dimension. So I'm just gluing those together. And then for the inside, I just measured that. I took it to my Silhouette Cameo and printed out Life is Good. That way I generally knew how big I needed it. And now I'm adding that to a lightweight piece of chipboard. That way it's just slightly dimensional on the cover of my album. I was really happy with how that turned out. Again, using Scotch Quick Dry, leaving it to dry for a few minutes. And now I'm going to add the beautiful flowers, leaves, and some of the pearl loop spray from Wild Orchid Crafts. I'll have all the products used today in the description box and thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed today's process. It was so much fun to make. Thanks for watching.